the slide that you're looking at now shows you the original setup for the vertical analysis that we used in class last week. For example, if you wanted to evaluate the change in accounts receivable, you had to scan your eye across the years. And uh, I've made that process a little bit easier with the uh, yellow boxes. So in order to be able to analyze the financial statements with a pivot table, the data had to be rearranged. And you'll notice in the uh, left-hand column that it's the uh, account names. The second column tells us if it's liability, asset, equity. The third column is the year. The uh, fourth column is the amount by dollar. And the fifth column is the amount by percent. Uh, notice that the red box highlights where the 1990 data ends and the 1989 data begins. So basically, instead of having the uh, financial statement analysis for five years spread horizontally, the financial statement analysis has been um, rearranged and is now saved in a vertical format. Uh, this setup shows you the original way that the uh, ratios were organized. Uh, it's, uh, again, very similar to the financial statements. So, for example, if you wanted to evaluate the change in the current ratio over five years, in this format, you'd have to move your eye across the five yellow boxes that you see highlighted on the screen and uh, make some judgment about the uh, type of change. Uh, so I did the same thing with the ratios as I did with the um, uh, financial statements. I took the uh, names of the ratios, put that in the first column. I took the year, put that in the second column, and then the ratio amount is in the third column. Uh, we also had data in the problem for uh, industry averages. For purposes of this uh, first setup, I did not um, include anything with that. And you'll note that on uh, each of the previous pages, uh, I've indicated the name of the tab where you can find the data. So for example, the ratio data, right, is on a tab called ratio data. So if you go to the dollars tab, you'll see three things. On the top left, right near A3 is a uh, pivot table. Uh, beneath that is a graph that displays the data in the pivot table. And then on the right-hand side is a pivot table tool called a slicer. And what we mean by slicer is that it is a set of buttons that allows you to filter what account names are displayed in the pivot table and also then displayed in the uh, graph. Uh, this particular tab displays the information in uh, dollar amounts. And if you want to just view one account, uh, you can click on it. If you want to view more than one account, you have to hold down on the keyboard the control key and select those one, two, three accounts, whatever the number is that you want to uh, look at. So in this case now, we're viewing cost of goods sold and uh, net sales. And so this allows us to see how uh, net sales is changing compared to cost of goods sold across five years, right? All the data that we have. 
on the percent tab, you will find the financial statement data expressed as a percentage of total assets, if it's a balance sheet account, or as a percentage of net sales, if it's an income statement account. Uh, so this is a, a simple example. I use the slicer to show uh, the change in the inventory account as a uh, percentage of uh, total assets. Uh, once again, you could use the uh, slide bar to move the slicer accounts up and down. They're uh, alphabetical. And if you want to display more than one account, uh, you use the control key to do that. So this helps us uh, improve the way, I think this helps us improve the way we're looking at the data. Uh, finally, this is the uh, pivot table and graph for uh, the ratios. It's in the Excel file on the ratio graph tab. And uh, it works just like the other two tables that we've seen. Uh, you use the slicer on the right hand side to select the graph, excuse me, to select the ratios that you're interested in. They're displayed numerically in the pivot table. They're displayed in graphic form in the bar graph. And in class, we had talked about how their accounts receivable and inventory turnover ratios were dropping. Uh, so what I have in the example is the uh, accounts receivable turnover ratio and uh, the scale on the left of the graph kind of highlights the differences maybe a little bit too much, but it's a pretty clear trend over the uh, years that we have data that their receivables are turning over slower, which also means it's taking them a longer amount of time to uh, collect the data or to collect the uh, accounts. Uh, so this slide uh, summarizes the uh, makeup assignment for the class that uh, is missed on Thursday, uh, February 23rd. Uh, get the uh, pivot table Excel file that uh, this video describes on Sakai. It's in the uh, class 11 folder. Uh, work with it, uh, play with it. Um, as I mentioned in class, I haven't seen any type of publication on this type of vertical analysis. So uh, maybe if your comments are favorable, and I'd appreciate knowing good or bad what you, what you think about this, uh, it's possible that um, some professionals might also be uh, interested in it. So it'd be kind of cool if uh, us at Bradley could develop a, uh, a new way of looking at financial statements. Uh, just like reading the cases um, to confirm that you've uh, spent a little time uh, working on the uh, pivot tables, the quiz on Tuesday, February 28th, I'll have two questions about the operation of the uh, uh, pivot tables. I'm not going to ask you any uh, specific questions about what was a certain dollar ratio but if you've worked with the uh, pivot tables, you'll find like most of the other questions, the, um, uh, th these will be pretty straightforward. So uh, thank you very much for your input. And uh, I look forward to meeting with you again uh, when class resumes on the 28th.